All right, YouTube, do you want me to talk more about Trump? I think I want to talk a little bit about Trump right now. I think the consensus is by at least a couple thousand people here that I need to cover more domestic politics. Three Amigos talks, of course, today. I'm going to fixate, though, as well. Anytime there's like an ISIS attack, that's getting covered. Unless it's, you know, one, two people get killed. Because that happens every fucking day at this point, let's face it, because of Europe's stupid policies. Uh, Venezuela is a big one that's a flashpoint. Anything in Korea, uh, really anything in geopolitics is great. But uh, Trump is rising now in the polls. That is, the last three polls that have been put out <clears throat> have been far kinder to him than the last slew. When people were saying, oh, he's crashing and burning, they don't seem to realize two of those polls, the, the ones that showed him behind by double digits were outliers that was never the, that was never the average of polls i discount them entirely which is why i say he's not crashing and burning now we've got one poll showing him ahead by four points i have a feeling though that that too is an outlier i wouldn't get too uppity about this if you're a trump fan it's rismussen <clears throat> now what do we know about rismussen they were the polling firm that got themselves kicked off nate silver's projections for one thing and, and even though I have my reservations about his methodology in this campaign season, at the time, he was right to do that. Uh, they consistently oversampled Republicans by two or three points in almost everything they did throughout the 2012 campaign, to the point where people like Karl Rove, they fixated on the handful of polls showing Romney about even or ahead in some of these swing states or nationally. And on the night of the election, of course, you remember his infamous meltdown. He had been looking at cherry-picked, uh, optimistic polls showing Mitt Romney doing better than he actually ended up doing. Everybody else knew if they looked at RCP or, or an aggregate of any halfway decent polling firm that it wasn't going to happen. But take a little bit of happiness out of this because Quinnipiac is far better, generally speaking, and that only shows Trump down, I believe, by two points. That's not bad. Uh, that's a mild rise from where he had been at. And that's that's even, you know, uh, if you believe that the two outlier polls showing him back by double digits were true, then he's surging right now. I don't believe that. I think he's slowly rising. Though I think in the wake of a break of the Brexit, he stabilized the polls which had taken into consideration time periods before the Brexit continued to show him down four or five points. And then thereafter, he's only down one or two points. I think he's only behind by a very slim margin myself. Additionally, I distrust those polls that don't take into consideration Johnson's presence within the race because he's running between 5 and 10 percent. It's a significant enough amount to count him in. Jill Stein, not so much, but keep in mind, Jill Stein's numbers after the Democratic convention are probably going to rise a few points, and she'll be about where Johnson is now, because of Sanders fans, the true far-left Sanders fans won't amalgamate behind Hillary. They'll back Stein. The Sanders fans that are more like just young and rebellious, you know, we're tired of the establishment, we believed in Bernie, uh, will primarily go to Johnson. Many of the others will go over and vote for Trump out of frustration at the DNC because she's not going to take on Sanders as a vice presidential uh, contender. The rest will amalgamate behind Hillary. However, ultimately, it's she that's being drained more by these third-party candidates than Trump. She'd be over 50% right now if Stein and Johnson were not visible within the race. If the media hadn't at least talked about them a little bit, given them the occasional interview, Clinton would be above 50% right now. Trump, meanwhile, would actually be suffering far worse. Now, I said this time and time again now for quite some time. If the Libertarian Party chose Johnson, because he's more of a centrist libertarian, more of a pragmatist, it's much more of a problem for Clinton than it is for Trump. It's, much, it's a much bigger attractor for the young leftist demographic than the, the young Republican demographic that Trump already owned lock, stock, and barrel by the time that New Hampshire rolled around. Um, so I still give the advantage in this election to Trump. Keep in mind, as I keep having to echo over and over, Trump is supposedly, if you listen to any mainstream outlet, he is the worst, weakest, most doomed, idiotic, xenophobic, bigoted person that's ever run for office in the history of the world. He's the next Adolf Hitler and going to start a nuclear war. He's sexist. He's homophobic. He wants to ban gays from existing. He wants to kill the witches. He wants to go 
uh, off in, uh, to war in five or six countries. He's just human scum. And yet he's slightly behind Clinton, all things considered. This shows me two things. It shows me Clinton is an extremely weak candidate and Trump is not to be uh, underestimated. Additionally, when Trump does fall in polling, his fans get more zealous, put his name out there more, shitpost more, meme him more, and that actually gives him more strength. Additional to this, Hillary Clinton has spent over $100 million already in general election ads without even technically having been declared the nominee of the Democratic Party. Trump has spent virtually nothing. He's raised virtually nothing, he's spent virtually nothing, and he's just a little bit behind Clinton. Now, after the convention, that's the real test for him. All of my predictions are based on Trump will amalgamate the Republicans, fire them up during the convention, because that's what he has a pension of doing. He'll make amends with people like Rubio, maybe not the Ted Cruz's, but the Rubio's and, and maybe even Jeb's of the party. He will make some amends to them, make a few concessions towards them. He'll get them on board. He will begin a massive fundraising effort through proxy. He won't do it himself. He'll have these others fundraising for him while he goes out to campaign and rally and, and take to the airwaves and so forth, give the interviews. When that happens, he will once again be sucking all of the wind out of Clinton's sails by dominating the news cycle. He will do that. That's what he'll begin doing, number one. And number two, he'll begin putting out ads that his own staff will be designing. He's not going to have a bunch of uh, staffers just do it alone, though. He'll probably be literally looking over their shoulders most of the time or having his son, who is one of his main campaigners, do it for him, uh, and he's competent, too. Clinton, meanwhile, needs a thousand people in order to send out a single tweet. Uh, it's a huge disadvantage. She's not running the kind of campaign that a person needs to run in the modern era. He is. Trump is. Johnson is. Why do you think Johnson's running about at double digits now? It's because he's running the same kind of social media campaign, more or less. The only difference is, of course, he didn't start off with a bang. He had to wait and, and didn't win on the first ballot, and things are kind of humdrum. And he also hasn't fully energized the libertarian movement. A lot of these people don't even think he's a libertarian. I got off board with Gary Johnson, too. Not saying I couldn't get back on board. If Trump did something totally shitty, if he said something that was just totally fucking screwed up or, or made an ass of himself or something like that, I might get back on feeling the Johnson. Right now, I'm, of course, tacitly on the Trump train. And I'm still analyzing it, though. And this is important. People like Nate Silver, for all of their strengths, have failed to understand the paradigm shifts currently going on, number one. They, don't, they miss the human element when they're analyzing things. And number two, they have a tendency to be biased. A lot of them tend to be left-leaning. Some of them are right-leaning. Karl Rove is very right-leaning, and so he puts out these continuous optimistic projections of everything the Republicans can do. Oh, we'll have every Senate, Senate uh, seat, every seat in the House. The presidency will be ours with 100% of the vote. All the Supreme Court justices will be conserved. And it's just never going to happen. It, it's, it's hogwash. He cherry-picks through his own polls, much to his discredit. I'm still looking at it from the perspective of a person who's more or less unbiased. Yeah, I could say I support Trump over Clinton, certainly, and Gary Johnson no longer appeals to me as much, so I'm going to vote for Trump. But at the same time, I have to analyze things from as unbiased a perspective as possible. And I'm telling you that I, I see very eerily the same situation now as you saw fairly early on during the primary season. People continuously said Trump will crash and burn. Uh, Trump went down one point in the polls, therefore he's done. Trump is being outraised, therefore he's done. Trump uh, cannot unify the party, so he's done. And so on and so on forth. They said this all throughout the primaries. They were consistently wrong, I believe. They will continue to say these doom and gloom things. And at the end of the campaign in November, it'll be Trump that comes out on top. I still say there's a chance of a landslide in his favor as well because of the Rust Belt states. You have to understand, it doesn't matter if Clinton is two or three points ahead in every swing state. Pennsylvania should not be a swing state to a strong Democratic candidate. Michigan should not be a swing state to a strong Democratic candidate. The fact that they are swing states is terrible for Hillary Clinton. 
The fact is that if Trump manages to rise up by three or four points nationwide, which is well within his capability of doing, he should be completely steamrolling her. He doesn't need to win by 20 points in Michigan. He only needs to win by a handful of votes. That's all that needs to be done. And that's what he's capable of doing. He can target New York. He is fully capable of winning the state of New York. This has to have her nervous. I don't care how smug. Hillary acts when she's talking to people because she always does. She continues to talk smugly to people because she thinks she's better than they are, even when things are a rolling disaster for her campaign. If she's if she's a hundred thousand votes behind in a state, she'll still come out and smugly say, oh, well, I guess the people of the state didn't vote right. Oh, I guess that they don't they're not quite as good as the people in this other state that voted for me. That's what she has a penchant for doing. There's no will among the American population for our first female president to be somebody like Hillary Clinton. They want somebody qualified. And keep in mind, Donald Trump may very well choose a female VP. That's always possible, too. I think he's, it's safer to go with Kasich. I think if he wants to go the safe route, he goes with Kasich or maybe even Rubio. Uh, I'm not joking. Rubio's young. He's, he's well-spoken other than when he becomes robotic. He could do worse than that. If he wants to go, if he wants to really ram it through, he'll go with uh, Joni Ernst or somebody like that. So uh, that's or or he'll reach across and get Jim Webb on board. Oh God, people would be uh, people would love that if he chose Jim Webb as his VP, and that would probably uh, ensure that I vote for him. By the way, because Jim Webb is the sort of person I can imagine as taking over the presidency and doing a good job. He's a Democrat that actually makes sense. J -j Fucking uh, Jim Webb should have been the Democratic nominee. I'd be voting for the Democrats if that had happened, uh, probably. But yeah, unfortunately, they shafted him because they didn't like the fact that he was a veteran, I guess. They'd rather have somebody like Hillary who thinks that the main victims of war are the women. Yeah, it's not the men that actually get shot that are the victims. It's the women that whose men get shot. Okay, that makes a whole lot of sense. Now, uh, Trump should not be inordinately worried right now. The pr general hasn't technically even begun. It's not August. You haven't had the conventions yet. You haven't had either of these people declared the nominee. We call them presumptive nominees. Now, is it not going to be Trump versus Clinton? Of course it's going to be Trump versus Clinton. But they haven't officially been declared by their parties to be the nominees. There are still people on both sides that have these weird delusional fantasies about kicking them out. And, and suddenly it'll be, you know, Ted Cruz versus Sanders or something like that. It's just not going to happen. It's just not, or Mitt Romney will get in suddenly at the last moment. It's not going to happen. Stop being delusional. That's about all. Peace out.